आकाशवाणी प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम निशित कुमार द हेडलाइंस Preparations are in full swing for the second phase of Lok Sabha elections. Voting to take place for 88 seats in 12 states and a union territory tomorrow. Campaigning for the rest of phases intensifies as leaders of various political parties hold rallies and road shows to woo the voters. 18 Maoists surrender in Dantewada district of Chhattisgarh. US President Joe Biden signs 95 billion US dollar package of aid for Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan. Severe heat wave conditions likely to continue over east and south peninsula predicts the IMD and the Panchu Sharma bags gold medal in the men's javelin throw at Asian under 20 athletics championships in Dubai And now the news in detail Preparations are in full swing for the second phase of Lok Sabha elections where voting will be held tomorrow the 26th of April campaigning for this phase ended last evening elections will be held for 88 Lok Sabha seats in 12 states and a union territory including the remaining part of the outer Manipur Lok Sabha constituency 20 seats of Kerala 14 seats of Karnataka 13 seats of Rajasthan 8 seats each of Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra 6 seats of Madhya Pradesh 5 seats each in Assam and Bihar 3 seats each of West Bengal and Chhattisgarh and 1 seat each in Manipur Tripura and Jammu and Kashmir will go to polls in this phase the polling for Betul ST parliamentary constituency of Madhya Pradesh which was scheduled in the second phase will now be held in the third phase due to the demise of the BSP candidate a total of 1198 candidates from 12 states and a ut along with four candidates from the outer manipur lok sabha constituency are in the fray in this phase in chatisgarh under the second phase of the lok sabha elections voting will be held tomorrow in three parliamentary constituencies rajnandgaon mahasamand and kankey the election commission has completed all preparations for the polling The three Lok Sabha seats of Chhattisgarh, Rajnandgaon, Mahasamund and Kanker where voting will be held tomorrow are partly affected by the problem of left wing extremism. More than 6500 polling booths have been set up in Chhattisgarh for the second phase of Lok Sabha elections. Webcasting will be done in about half of these polling stations. Polling parties have already been sent through helicopters to nine polling stations located in remote and sensitive areas of Kanker. Kankere Lok Sabha constituency and two polling stations in Garyabang district under Mahasamund Lok Sabha constituency Vikalp Shukla Akashwani News Raipur In Assam polling personnel in some far flung areas of Karimganj Dima Hasao and Karbi Anglong districts have left for the polling booths for the second phase of polls in the rest of the areas polling and security personnel will leave today with EVMs and other materials as many as 61 candidates are in the fray in this phase in the five Lok Sabha seats covering south and central Assam Over 77 lakh voters can exercise their voting rights our correspondent reports that political fate of several prominent leaders will be sealed in the second phase of polls for the ruling bjp state transport and excise minister parimal sukla baidya mp kripanath malla and dilip saikya are in the fray congress mp pradyut bordeloy is seeking re-election at the nagaon seat former mp radheshyam biswas for tmc congress leader hafiz bashir ahmed choudhry ai udf mla aminul islam and bodoland people's front legislator durga das boro are also in the fray all the seats are likely to see triangular contest In Manipur the election authorities have taken up all measures to conduct the second phase of Lok Sabha polls in 13 assembly segments in eight districts of Manipur outer parliamentary constituency the polling personnel and security personnel deputed for the polling stations in Tamenglong Okrul and Kamjong have left the district headquarters for the designated polling stations the polls will be conducted at 856 polling stations including special polling stations set up for internally displaced persons during the second phase of polls Kerala is all set to go to polls tomorrow as elections for all the 20 Lok Sabha constituencies in the state will be held in a single phase today is the day for silent campaigning by all the candidates
194 candidates are in fray for the Lok Sabha polls in Kerala. The state had witnessed high intense campaigns in the last months as the three major fronts, BGP-led NDA, Congress-led UDF, CPM-led LDF had left no stone unturned for ensuring victory for their sides. The state chief electoral officer had informed that all preparations for the polling day had been completed. Over 2.77 crore voters will be exercising their voting rights in 25,358 polling stations across the state tomorrow. Polling will be held from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. tomorrow. As hours are left for Kerala to go to polls, the electoral drama unfolds with its unprecedented intensity as a tight triangular contest is suspected in most of the constituencies in Kerala. Mayusha for Agashwani News from Tirvanandapuram. Campaigning for the rest of phases intensifies as leaders of various political parties hold rallies and roadshows to woo the voters. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and senior BJP leader will address a public meeting in Morena today. Meanwhile, today is the last day for filing nomination papers for the eight Lok Sabha constituencies in the fourth phase in Madhya Pradesh. We have a report from our correspondent. In Madhya Pradesh, overall 83 nomination papers have been filed by 58 candidates in the fourth and final phase for the state so far. In the fourth phase, voting will take place in Devas, Mansour, Ratlam, Dhar, Ujjain, Indore, Khandwa and Khargon districts. Election campaign is also in full swing in the state. Senior BJP leader and Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address a public meeting at the police parade ground in Morena at 11 a.m. today. The Prime Minister was in Madhya Pradesh yesterday too and addressed meetings in Sagar and Baitul Lok Sabha constituencies along with a road show in Bhopal. State Congress President Jitu Patwari, former Deputy Chief Minister of Rajasthan Sachin Pilot, former Union Minister Arun Yadav and Rajya Sabha MP Vivek Tankha will jointly campaign for Congress candidates in Ujjain, Mansour and Devas. Sanjeev Sharma, Akashwani News, Bhopal. Nominations for the fourth phase of Lok Sabha polls ends today. The nominations will be scrutinized tomorrow and the candidates cleared will be allowed to withdraw their candidature by the 29th of this month. 96 Lok Sabha seats spread over nine states and a union territory will go to polls in this phase on the 13th of May. In this phase, the states where voting will be held include Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Bihar, Jharkhand, Odisha, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Jammu and Kashmir. A total of eight constituencies from Maharashtra, five from Vidarbha region and three from Marathwara will be voting in the second phase schedule on the 26th of April. Voting will be held in Bulgana, Akola, Amravati, Varda, Yavatmal, Washim, Hingoli, Nanded and Parbani. We have more from our Mumbai correspondent. The fate of 204 candidates from eight Lok Sabha seats in Maharashtra will be sealed on Friday when over 1.5 crore eligible voters will choose their representatives. An interesting contest is expected in Buldana, Yavatmal, Vashim and Hingoli seats where the Shiv Sena led by Chief Minister Eknath Shinde will be contesting against Shiv Sena Ubatha or Uddhav Balasep Thakre. In Buldana, three-time MP Pratap Rao Jadav will be in fray as a Shiv Sena candidate while the party has chosen new faces in Yavatmal Vashim and Hingoli. Two other high-profile constituencies will see the BJP fight against the Congress. In Amravati, BJP is betting on sitting MP Navneet Rana, while in Nanded, sitting BJP MP Pratav Rao Patil Chiklikar will take on Vasantrao Chavan from Congress. In Vardha, BJP MP Ramdas Tadas will aim for hat-trick, while a triangular contest will be seen in Akola with Prakash Ambedkar challenging the BJP and Congress candidates. Nisharani, Akashwani News. Mumbai. President Draupadi Murmu and Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar have expressed condolence over the demise of BJP MP Rajveer Singh Dilair from Hathras Lok Sabha seat of Uttar Pradesh. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that he is deeply saddened by the untimely demise of Mr. Dilair and it is a big loss for the party. Mr. Rajveer Singh Dilair died yesterday of a heart attack. He was 65. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Lok Nirnay 2024, a special program on the general elections every evening at 7 and repeat broadcast at 9.30 p.m. on Akashwani Gold. Updates of election activities, insights from regions and constituencies, expert opinion and analysis in the world's largest festival of democracy. Stay tuned to Lok Prasarak Ke Saath, Lok Niranay 2024. Welcome back to the morning news. 
In Chhattisgarh, 18 Maoists, including a militia platoon commander and three women, surrendered before the police in Dantewada district yesterday. Three Maoists have surrendered before Deputy Inspector General of Police Kamlochan Kashyap and Superintendent of Police Gaurav Rai under the Lone Varatu campaign. Defence Secretary Giridhar Armani will today lead the Indian delegation to Astana, Kazakhstan for the annual meeting of the Defence Ministers of Shanghai Cooperation Organisation, SCO member states. The meeting will review the regional security issues within the SCO, including the Defence Cooperation Initiatives. During the two-day visit, the Defence Secretary will deliver India's statement at the ministerial meeting. U.S. President Joe Biden has signed a 95 billion U.S. dollar package of aid for Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan. Speaking from the White House after signing the bill on Wednesday, President Biden said it was a good day for America, a good day for Ukraine and a good day for world peace. He spoke a day after the U.S. Senate approved the aid package following months of negotiations and debate. It was passed in a bipartisan vote of 79 to 18. In the Senate, the aid package worth 95 billion US dollar in total includes nearly 61 billion dollar in aid to Ukraine, 26 billion dollar for Israel and 8 billion dollar for the Indo-Pacific. India Meteorological Department has forecast that heat wave to severe heat wave conditions are likely to continue over east and south peninsular India during the next four days. Heat wave conditions are likely over Bihar, Jharkhand, coastal Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and east Uttar Pradesh. IMD said the maximum temperatures will rise by 2 to 3 degrees Celsius over central and east India. Talking to Akashwani, IMD scientist R.K. Jenamani said that heat wave conditions are likely to prevail over coastal Odisha, Gangetic West Bengal, Odisha. And Bihar. Gangetic West Bengal and Southern and West Bengal, we have orange color alert for these areas. Marathwada and Chhattisgarh, they will have also normal weather. Madhya Pradesh also. Heat wave warning overall for uh, Indian region. Currently, heat wave is persisting over Odisha, Bengal, Jharkhand, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, and parts of Tamil Nadu. Orange color warning for the temperature 41 to 45, higher than normal, has been issued for next three to four days. Deepanshu Sharma won the gold medal in the men's javelin throw while three other Indian athletes bagged silver on the opening day of the Asian Under-20 Athletic Championships in Dubai. In the men's javelin throw, Deepanshu clinched the gold medal with a throw of 70.29 meters while Rohan Yadav claimed silver with a distance of 70.03 meters. In the men's 1500 meter, Priyanshu secured silver medal. And in IPL cricket, Delhi... Capitals defeated Gujarat Titans by four runs in the high-scoring thriller at the Arun Jaitley Stadium in Delhi last night. Chasing the mammoth target, Gujarat finished at 220 for eight in their 20 overs with the help of Sai Sudarshan, 65 of 29, and David Miller, 55 of 23. In today's fixture, Sunrise Hyderabad will take on Royal Challengers Bengaluru at the Rajiv Gandhi International Stadium in Hyderabad at 7.30 p.m. And now for a look at today's newspapers. It's over to Saira Mujtaba. Thank you, Nishit. Seizing on Kitroda's remarks, Prime Minister Modi says, Congress threatens family inheritance is the top story in all leading dailies. Prime Minister panicking due to Congress manifesto, says Rahul Gandhi, according to a report in The Hindu. High decibel campaign ends for second phase of Lok Sabha polls is a front page story in The Pioneer. Supreme Court says it can't pass order on EVMs on the basis of suspicion of manipulation, says a report in The Times of India. RBI bans Kotak Bank from onboarding new customers digitally is the top story in the Hindu business line. J.P. Morgan CEO praises Prime Minister for unbelievable job in India, says the statesman. Wheat procurement slows as moisture content hits harvest, reports Hindustan Times. And finally, U.S. warns Pakistan of potential risk of sanctions after it inks Iran MOUs, says a report in the Asian Age. And with that, it's back to you, Nishit. Thank you, Saira. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Preparations are in full swing for the second phase of Lok Sabha elections, voting to take place for 88 seats in 12 states and a union territory tomorrow. Campaigning for the rest of phases intensifies as leaders of various political parties hold rallies and roadshows to woo the voters. 18 Maoists surrendered in Dantewada district of Chhattisgarh. U.S. President Joe Biden signs 95 billion U.S. dollar package for aid for Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan. Severe heatwave conditions likely to continue over east and south. Peninsula predicts the IMD and the Panchu Sharma bags gold medal in the men's javelin throw at Asian Under-20 Athletic Championships in Dubai. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.